I am from Myanmar, and uh, we have a huge phenomenon with migration. In 2014, uh, when our government made the uh, first national census, which we haven't done for nearly 30 years, uh, we thought that we have 60 million population, but uh, when the actual census is done, we found that we only have 52 million population. We didn't uh, have a chance to count some six to seven million uh, Burmese who are living in Southeast Asia, mainly in uh, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, and many other parts of the uh, our neighboring economies. And then also, we didn't also count the Rohingya, the, the uh, Muslim uh, minorities in the western part of the country, which uh, <clears throat> in the recent weeks, our country was caught in the international headlines there was a, a kind of a false migration uh, that uh, turned uh, become very ugly, and then we were being um, accused of uh, having genocide against the Rohingya uh, minorities. <clears throat> My uh, presentation uh, likes to emphasize how a developing and transitioning uh, country like Myanmar is very important to. Uh, recognize the uh, migration phenomena, and it is also very important for the national governments to acquire a kind of a capacity that Yuko just mentioned. It's a, not just uh, the international instruments try to uh, become more local, but it's the local governments who also need to own it and try to manage the migration, and then it, in, in order to do that, you need to have the capacity. So I'm trying to <clears throat> advocate how uh, migration is so important for our economy by using the survey that we did uh, in 2015 and 2016. And this is about uh, what uh, we did in southeast part of the country, the Moon State, where many uh, population in Moon, that small states actually migrated to Thailand. And I'm trying to discuss about the uh, causes and also the consequences of migration in that particular state. Um, Moon State is, um, is a small open economy. It's, it's a very vibrant, uh, small ethnic minority state uh, where we ha also have a fourth largest uh, city in Myanmar. Um, it is very much connected to Thailand. So it's uh, physically, culturally, and historically, it is very much uh, tied to uh, Thai, Thailand. Uh, it's also, <clears throat> uh, the state is very much dependent on the agriculture. So uh, the, the agriculture then was uh, rice and rubber, which tend to be very labor intensive. Um, and then also the state is quite relatively well off compared to many other regions, especially those in the western part of the region where we have the current problems. Um, the survey was conducted in uh, 2015. We took, it took about uh, six months to collect uh, 1,680 households. And we also follow up with the qualitative interviews and focus group discussions in the later part of 2015 and 2016. And so we are coming up with some sort of initial evidence. And in fact, the whole country, uh, Myanmar, is, uh, is quite mobile. So there are uh, quite a bit of internal migration and also the outward external migration. But the Moon State is quite um, significant in a way that um, it, it is not only the highest out migrating uh, region, but also at the same time, uh, the state is also receiving migrants, uh, internal migrants from other parts of the country. So it is a kind of a transit um, state. Um, so, which is, I think, uh, quite relevant to what is happening in the western part of the country where the Rakhine, where the, the, the current Rohingya crisis happened, is the Rakhine is also kind of a transit state between Bangladesh and then also the more affluent uh, Southeast Asian Muslim countries where the Rohingya re refugees eventually try to go and then settle in the countries like Malaysia and Indonesia. Um, the agriculture, the, the, right now, the Moon State has um, 
highest concentration of rubber plantations in Myanmar. The rubber tends to be also labor intensive. You need the tappers to get the rubber uh, to produce. And then now, the most of the tappers and the laborers who are working in the rubber industry is now moving to Thailand, where the Thailand has a similar huge rubber industry. In fact, the Thailand is the, the world top uh, exporter of the rubber. So where uh, most of the plantation workers actually came from Myanmar. Um, the, the remittances, <clears throat> according to our survey, 20% uh, of the rural household income, uh, especially more upper income families are dependent on the remittances. So the, the yellow highlighted areas are the, the, the share of the remittances in the household expenditures. Um, <clears throat> in <clears throat> Moon State, um, almost half of the households have at least a one migrant. So it becomes a very common household uh, strategy to generate income. And the majority, 84% of the international uh, migrants uh, from Moon State actually went to Thailand because of the cultural and religious affinities. And uh, migration uh, tend to increase in, in 2011, when, uh, 2011 and 2012 when uh, both the host country and then the sending countries liberalized the laws governing the migration. So for instance, like a Thai laws, for the first time, they recognize a Myanmar migrant worker as a legitimate workers. They no longer treat them as illegal migrants, whereas a Myanmar also uh, recognize a migration phenomenon and that we try to increase and um, provide protection against these migrant workers. Um, <clears throat> we also found that the richer households uh, are more likely to have migrants because I, it also reflects the cost of migration. So the cost of migration is still uh, not cheap and so it still uh, can only be afforded by some of the uh, households who can actually invest in the migration process itself. Um, <clears throat> and migrants are mostly young men and women, so age uh, between 16 and 35 constitute about 75% of the migrant. And then 45% of migrants are female. I, I, that, uh, it's about the migrants who are going to Thailand. So we are seeing both male and women uh, are actually migrating in, in a very highly, um, <clears throat> in an increasing uh, phenomenon in that part of the country. And this is the missing labor force, and then you can see the, the population pyramid being a damp. Uh, there's a dip uh, in the uh, very uh, important uh, working age between um, 15 to 39. Um, and <clears throat> when we also try to look at the wages uh, along the moon state, and then the, the left part of the graph is the cities which are uh, farthest away from the Thai Myanmar border. And then the, those cities in the, the right side is the, the one who are actually located in the border area. So then you can see the wages uh, of the laborers. The day agriculture laborers actually tend to increase when the, the, the location becomes closer to the Thailand. Um, we have <clears throat> quite, a, quite a huge range of um, <clears throat> development implications. That I would like to focus first on the agriculture. We have a, a inefficient land rental sales market, so the land use has become less efficient uh, when the farming uh, uh, communities uh, have a high migration. And then we also have a transit migrant workers from the central other parts of the country who are trying to work uh, in the agriculture land in most state, and then that also produce a lot of inefficient production. And so what happened is the farmers, the, 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 the resident farmers in most state tend to focus more on the low labor intensity crops like the fruits and less uh, <clears throat> intensive technologies instead of uh, using the labor to make sure that uh, there's a, a proper uh, farming techniques that they try to uh, uh, use a low uh, intensity technology. 
And then there's also a, the, the, the farm, farming families are also facing the rising wages of uh, farm laborers. And then it also turned to uh, cost uh, high, higher cost of production and then also higher cost of skill labor in case of rubber. And the impacts on the families is also quite negative um, because the majority of migrants uh, uh, have education under high, high school and the youth and adult uh, are the highest categories of migrants. So the high levels of families with children living with uh, seniors like uh, grandparents are also facing a very vicious cycle of low education, early dropouts and dependency on the migration uh, resources. Um, the, the, the impact of remittances, in, according to our survey, the, most of the remittances funds by the dependent families, they use mostly about the house construction and some of those capital investment. They don't necessarily reinvest in the agriculture or invest in other productive businesses. And that's where um, the, 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 the usefulness of the uh, remittances in terms of uh, resolving the dependent situations of the uh, families are uh, not being met. And uh, <clears throat> so <clears throat> essentially what uh, the, the, the government has been uh, quite uh, unprepared uh, or ill-prepared to take the challenge of migration which has uh, becoming an increasing phenomenon in the recent years. And so this is where we are advocating the government, especially the regional government as well as the national government. Uh, by the way, uh, Myanmar has uh, 14 uh, sub-national governments, uh, which is uh, we follow the U United States formula of a federal-like uh, arrangement. So each uh, uh, sub-national governments uh, have their own uh, parliament, they have their own legislature, and they have their own government. So. Um, we also don't find the kind of a responsive uh, government in the moon state itself. Uh, uh, and then the national government itself also having been really uh, being more comprehensive of the migration management capacity. So I think this is where we are advocating perhaps they can start with a few initiatives. One is to uh, revive the rubber productivity because the Moon State has a, it's, it's the highest rubber plantations. And this is where the government can invest in the uh, prov provision of the uh, uh, skill training for the tapping so that they can, nowadays the women are filling the role of the men tappers. And this is where uh, perhaps the government can take the initiative to train the women. Uh, perhaps the women can, um, become a skilled tappers, and then that's how it can also affect the quality of rubber they produce, and they can actually get more income uh, from the quality rubber. And so this is the one area where a certain government agency can start doing that kind of training. Uh, one other uh, issue which uh, we are trying to focus on is the microfinance for migrants, um, because uh, as I said, the migration is costly, and usually the financial problem begins at the uh, beginning of the migration phase when the migrant workers wanted to migrate and then they need to borrow money. And this is how they actually uh, unintentionally uh, become the victims of the agents who also control some money. Uh, so this is where the microfinance um, organization who, that have been targeting the poor in many other instances, they haven't really gone into the migration uh, services, so they haven't really served the migrant population because the migrant populations are mobile. And that was uh, assumed as a uh, financial risk, and then the microfinance institutions haven't really invested a lot in uh, financing the migrant workers. Uh, in, on the other hand, the migrant workers are the one with the more guaranteed income, um, but somehow they are not uh, credit worthiness to actually attract the more low cost uh, loan for their migration processes. So I think this is where uh, the government can actually intervene and provide a solution for these migrant workers. And then in 
In connection to that, uh, we are also focusing a bit on the uh, capacity development for migrant workers, whereas the financial literacy is a key because they are actually working uh, in the foreign uh, countries where they are not uh, familiar with using some of the banking services because most of those migrant workers are unbanked uh, citizens. Uh, when they went to uh, Thailand or Malaysia, they are actually being given all the ATM cards, but I, I was told that none of them, they, they use ATM card only once a month. So they, they, when the payday comes and they usually go to the ATM machine, get all the money out and then they keep the money at their home. So I think this is a kind of a situation where the government can provide uh, more assistance to some of those migrant workers in terms of financial literacy and financial inclusion strategies. So this is my final <clears throat> uh, recommendation. Uh, to the national government, and also as a piece to the international organizations, uh, especially the IOM and many other agencies who might be able to help us with the kind of a capacity that we need to conduct uh, some serious research for evidence-based policy making. Um, because <clears throat> we are a new, uh, newly emerging and transitional country which uh, did not recognize migration as a development phenomenon. We treated that as an illegal a criminal act. Uh, so we don't necessarily have a kind of a uh, reliable data. So we need to, uh, this is this survey, we can only conduct in a one small region where the migration affected the most. But uh, I think we need to have a much more national data so that we can understand the labor mobility issues in the larger national context. And then also the, the, the skill development relevant for both domestic and overseas markets, something like a rubber tapping. Uh, the, our government were afraid that if they provide the skills, that, that all the skills were meant to help our neighbors uh, neighboring economies and then their ability to use that skill efficiently. But nevertheless, uh, we have to uh, invest in some of those skills training for the migrant workers because uh, nowadays with the uh, normalization of our domestic economy and domestic uh, political uh, environment, uh, more and more migrants are thinking about returning back to the country and this is where uh, initial investment in the skills uh, can be recaptured once they all return back to the country. And of course, the remittances still uh, is a key uh, issue, and this is where the, my, uh, we can leverage the migration for development purposes. And then most uh, uh, important uh, <clears throat> uh, aspect is to, to channel the remittances into a more productive investments, and then also in, in the programs that can actually address the root causes of the migration in the first place. So uh, we, I'd like to stop here and then I look forward to working with you more in this area. Thank you.